What is the cost of air pollution in our world today? You can measure it in US dollars or Naira, in millions or billions. Whatever your estimate is, that you're watching this video means you're breathing fine. And denying you of a single breath draws you closer to death. So believe me when I say that the air we breathe is priceless, especially when it is pure. Today, Nigeria ranks 152 out of 180 countries at the Environmental Performance Index for Air Quality. The World Bank reports that the industrial emissions are the major source of pollution in Nigeria. Sadly, 94% of the population in Nigeria are exposed to air pollution levels that exceed WHO guidelines. Basically, there is a valid reason to be concerned about the quality of air we breathe in Nigeria. This is Orimerimu community in the Bafo area, a border town between Ogun State and Lagos State, Nigeria. Home to over 1,000 settlements and over 5,000 people. Until one tire recycling company sprung up and now threatens the livelihood of residents by huge emissions and black soot deposited in the area. My name is Reverend Peter Kais. I live in this living room, more way for here, for almost four years now. I started uh, almost 2019. We started around July. We discovered that in the night we couldn't sleep. So I called my neighbor. Then I, I told him that this is what I'm experiencing. He said, also, also, he's expressing the same thing. Then what we have to do is you call our chairman. So when we call the chairman, the chairman said we should meet over there. It's a very terrible experience because of the fact that what those people are doing, maybe they have not actually uh, made the government to know. They are using poisonous uh, chemicals also. But in the night, it will wake you up by turning your stomach. The nasty or offensive, you know, odor from there. They, they release it in the midnight by around 1 to 2 a.m. when they know everyone would have slept. So most of what we do, most of what we do is to move out and use cloth to cover our nose. So when we go there, not knowing that the chairman and the other people have been there before, they saw what uh, was going on. So then we started asking them, what are they doing here? They said they are maturing, uh, they are burning tires. And I said, no, this place cannot, it's not a place for you people to do this kind of business. This is a residential area. You have to go to come. So all the community were agreed that should write letter to the government, which we did. But since the people stay persistent doing whatever they are doing, almost every day because it's very very dangerous once you breathe it in you are in trouble in the following day it has even caused mad order for me now the organization operates in the night and in the day uh, by burning tires they have machine where they used to burn the tires so when the tires come in they have come here very, very smooth coming out and this smoke will cover everywhere we are not secured here it's really God has been keeping us alive. Even though I've just came back from admission, from hospital. First of all, I want them to relocate from here. Because that's what, that's what can save us. What I'm doing, I'm not doing it only for myself, but for the whole community. They can pack away. The government should give them, you know, they have industrial area. They can relocate them to another place. Leave this place. This industrial, this is not industrial area. So they can have peace here, so we can live here. This and I, I think we have I've been living here before they came. 
assuming they have been operating here, I cannot go and buy land here now because I know that what they are doing there is dangerous. It's dead. What this this pumping cannot be in this place. They have to be relocated to industrial area. We have industrial area in the outskirts of this place. You are marked for companies to do whatever they want to do. Even the school children here are affected during the day. There is a school, there are schools around that are even complaining because of the children. So the government has to do something about this. <laughs> We have gone to many places. We are crying out now so that the public will hear us, every good Samaritan of Nigeria, to come and help us to make sure that these people leave this place. They don't go and start a play, they don't go to their industrial area where they can do. Nobody stop them not to do their, their business. But they cannot take because of their business to, you know, cause death to people's life. So please, oh, let Nigerians come and help us. Oh. They don't go away from here. We do not ask uh, Chinese not to do their work. Let them go to a place where they can do their uh, native business. Nobody stop them. They don't use their business to come and uh, destroy our life. Ah. I'm getting old now. How much money would I be using to, to go for hospital to pay for me? Me and my family. Huh? They don't go to a place they can do their business. Nobody stop them. This is not industrial area. This is residential. So please oh, let Nigerians help us. What this means is that living in a community is not different from smoking about four packs of cigarettes daily. While solutions to address the problem of tire pollution are important and businesses must thrive, what is more important is that the lives of people are not endangered. Women and children are at high risk from heart disease to so lung disease, leukemia to cataract, skin cancer and all sorts. Poor air quality and prominence of film emitting industries, especially in residential areas, have been linked to these life-threatening diseases. If you found yourself in a community like this, your story would not be any different. For how long can the community choke on black oxygen while the rest of the world breathes in and out freely? This needs a urgent response. The question now is, how can this be addressed? <laughs>